All right, thank you very much. Well, we are going to um, jump right in this evening as I am very excited to have you all with us. Um, I appreciate you taking again time out of your night to be with us to learn about Idaho wage enhancement. So um, we are going to be exactly at an hour and we are recording it as well as I will be posting it up online later this week. And then you will get a follow up email from Aubrey telling you when it is up and so that you can go back and um, look at things if you've missed pieces or if you were taking notes, as well as if you have teammates or community partners that you work with in other child care centers in your community that weren't able to attend tonight, that you could help remind them that they could also go back and watch it. So our goal this evening is to share information about the upcoming wage enhancement grant and highlight some of the most frequently asked questions. And we will be doing demonstrations this evening on how to apply and where to apply. So let's jump in. So a little bit about why wage enhancement. So this is probably not new to many of you, but the median hourly wage for an early childhood educator is lower in Idaho than the national average, even after we adjust for cost of living. And on average, programs lost two lead teachers and four assistant teachers this year. And that has probably significantly been um, compounded with issues of corona and the levels of recruitment and retention that has just been very difficult for all of you as child care owners and business owners. And this was also clearly highlighted to us at the state by two significant reports. So one of those was our teammates who are with the preschool development grant who recently completed the needs assessment in partnership with child trends. And under that needs assessment, there's a workforce section, and it clearly articulated for Idaho based on our Idaho needs from child care providers feedback that it was important to be able to look at and invest in short term relief for staff. And the second was through our child care needs assessment or well, we called it the child care provider survey that over 500 of you responded to in November. And that feedback was significant in that we were intentional with asking you questions open ended so that we could hear from you the impact that Corona has had not only on your business, but also to the families that you were serving and to the staff that are working directly with children and families and how that was having a toll on them um, in the classroom and also as an overall employees and their and their health and well-being. And it was this is one of the comments that came from that survey. Commenters noted that the pandemic has exacerbated the issue due to that staff having to quarantine, staff burnout, and just the um, requests for hazard pays and raises, knowing that you are an essential infrastructure during the pandemic and as we continue to recover. So from those two sources of data that came the development of the Idaho Child Care Wage um, Enhancement Grant. And this is a temporary wage supplement funded through the SURSA funds, which as you can see um, highlighted, they're very long, but it's the Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act. So that was the bill that was passed on December 27th, 2020. And it is through those funds and the data and research that we had from all of you talking to us since the pandemic started that recognizing we always start with our goal. And it is important for us to always think about what is our goal and that is to invest in systems that support Idaho families and Idaho providers. So this opportunity for the Idaho Wage Enhancement Grant came from this understanding of our data and the research, but also directly from you as child care providers. So a couple of things to note. So this is a temporary wage supplement. It is non-competitive grant. So it opens to all, it is open to all licensed child care providers who have been providing full-time in-person care since March 1st, 2021. And it is eligible for providers to receive a monthly award based on their eligible number of staff beginning in May of this year. And the monthly awards will continue to be paid each month until av available funds are exhausted. 
So what is wage enhancement? We thought we should start with some basics um, for some that may be more familiar with it than others. So how we are talking about wage enhancement is that a temporary supplement paid to your employees. You as business owners will apply on behalf of your business and your eligible staff will receive a once a month wage supplement paid from the child care program to, distributed to, to be distributed to their staff. And as you can see, we'll talk more in details specifically about this, but it is $330. And specifically, we identified $30, as you can see in this column, for employers to be able to take out taxes and other withholdings to be dis prior to being distributed to the funds to their staff. And we will definitely, we have lots of questions and answers that we're gonna talk about that we received from all of you in the last couple of months. So we're gonna talk about that towards the end as well. And some important reminders prior to going into a little bit of the demonstrations. So again, these are not to be used as a supplement. They may not supplant regular pay. So they are a supplement to their regular pay, excuse me. <laughs> I re it's, read, it's written correctly, I said it wrong, I apologize. So it is to be used as a supplement and not to supplant their current pay. And again, for business owners, for you to know that this is a grant and it is not a loan. And we have lots of tools and resources in the grant guide to help you um, be able to support you in knowing the spending requirements and how to best maintain records so that for these awarded funds. And then again, we will be posting this online as well as similar to your grants that you've been receiving as business owners since May of last year. We also have a grant guide for the wage enhancement opportunity as well. So that is available in addition to the recording. So let's talk a little bit about the eligible applicants. So this is you as business owners. So as a business, these are the um, eligible criteria. So you must have an active email address and that you check regularly. You must be providing in-person child care and you are to remain in good standing through the grant period, as well as providing child care services 40 hours per week for after school programs, you offer you must be offering at least four hours per day, either before or after school care. And then you must have identified employees receiving a W-2 tax form that are listed on and maintained monthly in your RISE account. And this is critical, and we'll talk about that again in the frequently asked questions. But will, it will be imperative for you as business owners to ensure that you are actively checking your RISE accounts and maintaining your employee list on a monthly basis. And for your staff, for it to be eligible to receive the wage enhancement, they must receive a W-2 from you as their employer. They must work with children at least 15 hours a week or more. They are providing direct care to children and that they only receive one wage enhancement per month, regardless of the number of employee programs. So you may have employees who work in two different facilities, or they may work for one organization and then another on certain days, but they will only be eligible for one wage enhancement opportunity. And we will be try and we can track that on the back end, but we just wanted to make that open and transparent for you as a business owner. And that you must have employed for that your employees must be employed for the full calendar month. And we have some examples in our guidebook to talk that through as well. So now we have three demonstrations that um, of, through RISE. And I want to say a special thank you to Iarta House Stars leadership staff, specifically Malia Wiesner, who really helped us outline the, these three sets of videos. Um, so the first one is going to be for you as a business owner for how to apply. And I'm going to share that with you and then we'll go into the second video. This video will show you how to apply for a wage enhancement grant. Oops, sorry, that was me. I apologize. In RISE. To apply for a wage enhancement grant, a facility admin will log into their facility, go to the Quality Improvement tab, and open the grants accordion. In the bottom right, you will click on the grant information button. 
This will present you with a pop-up that describes all of the grants available for child care businesses in Idaho. On the far right side, you can read more about the Idaho Child Care Wage Enhancement Grant and check your eligibility. When you select check eligibility, you will see a pop-up displaying your facility's eligibility for applying. All indicators must be green to apply for the grant. Your facility is eligible to apply for the grant if you have a current city or state license in RISE, you have at least one eligible employee on your staff list in RISE, this includes at least one employee who receives a W-2 in your business, works 15 or more hours a week, provides direct care to children, and is not the owner of the business. If you have eligible operating hours, this includes being an out of school time program or providing care for 40 or more hours a week. Head Start funded programs are not eligible for this grant. You are not terminated for being an ICCP vendor and you have not previously applied for this grant. If you have already applied for the wage enhancement grant and your application has been approved or declined or is still in process, you will not be able to apply again. If all of your indicators are green, you can select the apply button. This will pop open the application. All required fields must be completed before you can submit. This includes information in certain fields, answering questions, clicking on the link to read the wave enhancement grant guide. This will navigate you to the new RISE Help section, which will house the grant deck. Entering your initials, agreeing to the terms and conditions of the grant, and entering your full name at the end. Once all of the fields have been completed, Select Save to submit your grant application. Now that you've submitted your application, you can see the status by returning back to the Quality Improvement tab, opening the Grants Accordion, and looking for the status on the application entry. It will either say Submitted, On Hold, Approved, or Declined. You can also click on the clipboard for the wage enhancement application entry to see your application and if any comments have been left by DHW on the processing of your application. This completes how to apply for the wage enhancement grant in RISE. All right. So our second demonstration. So that again is going to be we are recording it so you can go back and look at these um, as as I'm sure you will want some time to be able to review that as well as we have step by step identified in the grant guide. So our second demonstration is for staff eligibility in RISE. This short video will explain staff eligibility in RISE for the Wage Enhancement Grant. There are six eligibility criteria for each employee on your staff list. First, I will say them, then I will show you where to find this information in RISE. To be eligible for the Wage Enhancement, a staff person cannot be the owner of the facility, must provide direct care to children, cannot have a position of other, is a W-2 employee, has been employed for a full month and works 15 or more hours a week. To find this information in RISE, you will start by going to your facility account and opening the staff tab. For each employee on your staff list, click on the edit icon. It looks like a pencil on a piece of paper. In this pop-up, the individual cannot have the same name as the person listed as the owner name field in your facility tab, must provide direct care, 
cannot have a position of other must be a W-2 employee has been employed for all of the last month. So cannot have a higher date with the month that is the current month or the last month. And works 15 or more hours a week. If you've made any changes, be sure to select save. For any of your employees who meet these criteria, all of these fields must be accurate for each employee on your staff list in order for them to receive the wage enhancement each month. And the last demonstration we have is for this grant opportunity, each the business owner as well as the employee will be receiving a receipt of the wage enhancement grant and this demonstration just shows you where you can find those monthly receipts I mean, we can't be too loud. this video will show you how to find a receipt for the wage enhancement grant in rides both a facility admin and a staff person can see if they received a wage enhancement for the previous month. For facility admin, open your facility account in RISE, go to the Quality Improvement tab, and open the Grants Accordion. Here you will find an entry for any month you received a wage enhancement grant. Click on the clipboard icon to see more details and click and open the download to find your receipt and a record of who to disperse the wage enhancement to. For an individual user who receives a wage enhancement, they will log into their RISE account and open their PD record. Then click on the recognition tab and see a record of each month they should receive the wage enhancement from their employer. So on this last slide, I know we have, we're gonna head into talking about commonly asked questions. So I wanted to let you know, oh, I have you on. I'm doing the recording here. I'm going to move to the next slide and then we will. I'm going to turn it over to Aubrey to um, help us walk through some of the commonly asked questions. But I want to say something really quickly as we head into that area and recognizing that after this evening's webinar and having that posted online, that we will be launching the grant on April 1st. So our intent was to be able to have this evening to share with you these upcoming grant opportunity to be able to give you access to the grant guide as well as this recording to be able to think through as an individual business owner if you're does this does your eligibility for as a business does do you meet that as well as your staff for the wage enhancement opportunity to be able to think about the potential of applying for this grant which will start april 1st and so we have tried to think through over the last month and a half we have an amazing advisory council who provided us many questions and things to think about as we began to go down the path of developing the Idaho Wage Enhancement Opportunity. So we are very much appreciate and thank them for giving us their questions, as well as our Child Care Resource and Referral Office staff. Often we're talking with providers in their offices or on their phone, gathering questions that were helpful for us in framing out the commonly asked questions and the guidebook. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Aubrey to talk through some of the things that we saw consistently, either through email, phone calls, or from um, providers giving us their thoughts in the advisory group or through the CCRC office staff. And these six were the ones that came to the top. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Aubrey and have her share with us. Thank you. I'm excited to be here with everyone. 
I'm excited to see all the chats coming into the, the Q&A box and we'll, we'll work to get everyone's questions answered if we can tonight. And if we can't, we'll, we'll have some follow-up materials available for everyone. So um, I, hope we, I hope we can meet your needs tonight, but know that there are more resources coming and um, our staff and Idaho Star staff are eager to help you as you consider applying. Um, so the first question, and um, I see it coming up in the chat. I get $330 each month per eligible employee. How do I spend it? And we've addressed this in the grant guide, but um, I, I think we should work through it. So the employee will be eligible to receive $300. Those are pre-tax dollars. We want you to take taxes and withholdings out of that $300 before you give it to the employee because we don't want employees to be left with a tax bill at the end of this. You know, if, if, if the funding should last for one year, that's $3,600 in addition, then we don't want the, you don't want your child care workers holding the, you know, a, a tax bill for an extra $3,600 at the end of this. The, the goal is that you're taking it out as withholdings as it's distributed to them. That $30 is for you and your business and any costs or fees or uh, payroll um, expenses that may be associated with participating with the grant. That $30 can be spent on your own taxes. That $30 can be spent on payroll taxes. You can give the entire amount to your employee and, and take withholdings out of that if you choose. But that $30 is for you to use in relation to the grant and your employee's payroll expenses. The $300 needs to go to them and those are pre-tax dollars. And then the next question, and I'm seeing this come up in the group chat, so hopefully this will be helpful to everyone. The next question is about staffing. We know that um, for, for better or for worse, childcare has quite a bit of turnover. And um, we also know that, you know, one of, part of this grant was to help you recruit and retain qualified staff members. We know that they are the cornerstone of quality childcare. So if you hire new employees, yes, they can participate. Participating child care operators only apply one time for the grant, but you maintain your staff list every month. It's very important that you update your staff list every month. New staff members that meet the eligibility requirements and have been employed for the entire prior month may participate. The example in the grant guide is if you hire an eligible employee on August 15th, they maintain their employment at your facility they will be eligible for that first full month, which would be September, and that wage enhancement is paid prospector is paid afterwards, so it's paid October. So in that October payment, you will receive a September wage enhancement for that employee, knowing that we they worked that full prior month because you kept your staff list current in rise. And then vice versa, if you lose a staff member, a year again, we really hope you're updating your staff list in rise and only staff members that have worked for the entire prior month can participate. So for example, if a staff member leaves on August 20th, they would not receive an August wage enhancement paid on September. And we would know that because you updated your staff list when they left your employment. And I'll continue to watch the Q&A about other staff questions and we'll address those. And then tax advice. I know that there are a lot of questions about uh, receiving grant funds they, because they can they are 1099 reportable for businesses that receive a 1099. The department and Idaho Stars cannot give you tax advice. We strongly encourage child care providers to work with a qualified tax professional. And the grant application window is open for six full weeks to enable you to do your homework and decide if this is working for you. So Please reach out, get your tax advice from a professional, not an early childhood major, <laughs> get it from an accountant, and they will be much more qualified to assist you with that. And as we're thinking about taxes, um, that W-2 form comes up. It's a new indicator in your staff list in RISE. You'll be required to update that for all of your staff members and to be honest and accurate about who in your staff is receiving a W-2. And the reason that is a criteria is, again, because we don't want staff members, you know, low-income early child care workers to be held with a tax bill at the end of wage enhancement. We know that those $300 are pre-tax, so staff should expect to get less than $300 in their paycheck because they're getting um, that withholding taken out. And that $30 is, again, to cover any costs that you may have associated to administering this grant for your staff. 
And then I'm going to keep moving on through these questions. And as you're, I'm, I'm seeing them pop up in the Q&A. So I'm hoping as you're reaching all of this that, um, that I'm answering your questions. And again, like I said, I'll be following up with these. Um, I'm going to move on to a question about record keeping. And what does that look like? First and foremost, please keep your staff list up to date in RISE. You letting us know as you onboard new staff and other staff exit will prevent overpayments. If you receive grant funds for a staff person who is not eligible, it's your duty to report that and it's your duty to repay them. This holds us all accountable for the taxpayer dollars we're spending on this program and we can help you with that. The grant guide includes um, all sorts of ways that you can keep records, but primarily you want payroll records, general ledger records, um, your state and federal in taxes, those are all good important records. They must be retained for five years and um, they will, um, your staff members will also receive a record that they um, have been included in your grant. In addition, in your RISE account, you will receive record of your application and you will receive record, a monthly statement of which members of your staff receive a wage enhancement. This helps you align your record keeping to the funds that you receive. And then this question came up, I, I hear you all being so concerned about your staff members. And we know that lots of child care workers also rely on the Idaho Child Care Program or ICCP to subsidize their child care costs. Please know that ICCP recently increased their income limit from 130% of poverty to 145% of poverty. For most families, a $300 wage enhancement will no longer disqualify them for participating with ICCP. Certainly it's not a guarantee and all of your ICCP participating staff members are required to follow all of the program rules, but it is significantly less likely to disqualify them. And again, once a staff person becomes eligible, during their eligibility period, that income threshold goes much higher to 85% of our state median income. And it is very, very unlikely that $300 would um, exceed their income limit. Okay, I am seeing so many questions come in and I am loving them all. I'm hoping I've addressed some of them, but I'm gonna read through and I will offer if anyone wants to I'm just going to answer a few of them really quick, and you can let me know in the chat or in the Q&A if you have more questions or if I need to address it more fully. With this many people on our call, we have almost 200. I don't want to unmute everyone because you may all be having family gatherings like I am, and so um, I'll keep it quiet, but I will address what's coming up in the chat and the Q&A. And Erica, you are welcome to interject if you see something interesting. Okay, and I can't see all of them, but I did see one that came mm -hmm. in just a second ago with regard to um, whether or not this will replace the child care grants yes. that are um, currently, so sorry, um, you, that you currently okay. are receiving as a business. And the answer to that is no, you will still continue to receive as a business owner your monthly grants that you have been receiving as, as your eligibility has continued through since May of last year. This is a new initiative to support your workforce in addition to your sustainable business grants. So with our federal funding that has come into our state, um, Erica and our child care leadership has really prioritized supporting child care and families in a variety of ways. So in addition to doing things like increasing our income limits and decreasing our co-pays, we've also implemented those child care emergency grants, phase one, two, and three. And those sustaining grants are ongoing and can be used in conjunction with this grant. We know that many of you are using those sustaining grants to pay your payroll costs. Keep in mind that this is an enhancement. This is a supplement to their current wages. This is not a raise. You, you don't use this to, to increase their, their rate of pay. This is a supplement on top of it. And that other grant funding you can still use to, for your regular payroll costs, not the wage enhancement. And you can still use for all of your utilities, your mortgage, your rent, your supplies, your materials. Um, all of those things can still be used in those grants. 
So you could potentially layer them together to cover more of your payroll expenses or to meet more of your business needs. And I'm seeing more questions. I'm going to get to them. Um, so the first question was, can non-ICCP providers participate with wage enhancement? And the answer is absolutely yes, of yes. course. All licensed child care providers who are providing full-time child care in person can participate with this opportunity. And the RISE uh, application will help kind of filter out people who may not be eligible. And then the grant guide, of course, lists all of our very specific eligibility criteria. So we'll want you to work through that. And then let's see. Uh, what if the teacher takes maternity leave? Again, um, we want we will only administer grants to the people who are employed full time at your facility providing direct care, um, and we want them working that full month. So if they take time off, if they take time away from your business, update your staff list when they leave and when they come back, and we will make sure that they're paid accordingly. And um, let's see. A closing date for applying. We will take applications all the way through May 14th. So you have plenty of time to begin your research and see how this will impact your business. And let's see, for those who are getting licensed right now, do they qualify? No, you had to have been operating as of March 1st. We want to sustain our existing businesses and we want to help you grow. And I, we, as we have additional funding coming into the state and as we understand how we can use that funding, we may extend this opportunity or open it up again. But for right now, this, this opportunity is only for businesses that were operating as of May 1st. I see another question that says, what do you mean by employees in good standing? And we mean businesses in good standing. That means you must be licensed and are ICCP certified, meeting all of your requirements. You can't have been suspended, revoked, or terminated. You have to, and you have to maintain that licensing and your eligibility. So, for example, if a business's license lapsed during this wage enhancement period, they may become ineligible to participate for that month. Typically, you become licensed again. And we, we resume, but it's going to be very important for businesses who participate with this to maintain their licensing and stay in good standing with their licensors. Someone asked the question with regards to, and we highlighted that in the grant guide, but our anticipation is that this grant will go through for at least a year. I'm trying to keep up with the questions. Yep. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm seeing um, what happens if an employee only works September through May. If that's when they work and they work those full prior months, then that's when they would be eligible. Um, we are not offering this to um, private school employees. So, for example, if you are a private school, your kindergarten teacher who teaches during their regular kindergarten day would not be eligible for this grant. But that's how it goes for all of the federal funding. We can't use it to replace anything that could be offered in a school. And let's see. Um, this person said, as an employer, could we just give the staff the full $330 and then just tax that whole amount? Yes, you can. You can choose to do that. Um, it's, it's your choice to do that. And um, it's certainly not a requirement. You can keep that $30 to help offset any of your payroll administration costs if that's necessary for your business. And you can think expect $30 oh. to cover all of the expenses of payroll, not necessarily. Again, we are not your tax professional. We encourage you to work with a tax professional, but we don't expect that that will meet the cost for every business, but maybe for some. And just to kind of also just to add to that, I know we talked a little bit about it and we have a whole section in the grant guide as well um, around record keeping, as well as we have some samples and examples. If you um, are an organization that may be smaller, that doesn't have the infrastructure to track that um, through your use of technology, but that you do need to keep your records for five years. So we talk about that in the grant guide as well and give you some examples. That is a helpful reminder. Thank you. Is, we talked about if you had yeah, to be ICCP have, approved. We already talked about that. Mm -hmm. um, so this provider wants to know, is the grant distributed as a bonus in their paycheck or is it divided into an hourly rate? She's explaining that bonuses could potentially be taxed more. 
So our guidance is that this is not an increase to their hourly rate. Mm -hmm. This also doesn't have to be distributed as a technical bonus, but we do encourage you to work with your tax professional. This is just a flat rate paid up supplement of that $300. So you'll need to work with your tax professional to determine how to apply it to your employee's payroll. But we, we do not recommend that you raise their pay rate to include this because this is a temporary wage enhancement. This will end. So do not raise their hourly pay wage unless you can sustain it when the grant ends. This is a supplement to their regular pay. And two, one of the questions was okay. with regards to the grant will open on April 1st. Businesses have six weeks to apply. And the question was their employees will receive their money in May for working a full month in April. That's accurate, yes. Um, then this person um, says, is there a maximum amount that they can be making? No. Yes. All eligible employees, even if you are already paying your staff really well, Thank you for doing that. Our industry thanks you, but they are eligible for the wage supplement. I think one way to think about this is lots of our grocery store workers and our nurses and our healthcare providers received hazard pay for working throughout the pandemic. And while childcare, you know, some providers offered hazard pay, this is essentially a similar program. This is a supplement because child care workers have put themselves in harm's way, they're at an increased risk, and this is a supplement to not only help you increase their wages temporarily, but it's a benefit to them and a, and a gratitude to them for working through the pandemic and sustaining our workforce while they did that. A question that we had was with regards, like, oh, go ahead, Aubrey. Are employees like cooks, office staff, and cleaners qualified? The answer is no. They must be providing direct care to children. That is one of the very important criteria. They must be providing care to children to qualify your bus driver, your accountant. <laughs> they may be helpful right now, but they do not qualify unless they provide direct care to children. And our intention was that, remember when we go back to the, our goal and wanting to really use the information that we heard from directors, which was Idaho, and, and not only from the directors giving their feedback in November, but also from our preschool needs, preschool development needs assessment, which is through surveys and focus groups with child care providers. And we know in this state, we have a concern with recruitment and retention of qualified staff. So recognizing we have a limited amount of funds, which sounds like crazy to say limited amount because it's a lot for child care, which is a phenomenal investment in our state and in our country. But those dollars really have to be able to have some, some boundaries to that. And so recognizing that owners and directors wanting to be able to recruit and to retain those staff we had to make decisions about where the long, where the most money could go for the longest amount of time. And so that is how that decision was made. Not undervaluing the importance of all the aspect that it takes to run a business eight to five or eight to eight or on the weekends as non-traditional care does. But recognizing that our intention is to be able to support and to um, provide in this enhancement to recruit and to retain your qualified workforce, which we know when we have high qualified teachers who have who have strong professional development, those teacher child interactions are really what impact that child and that family for their long term development. So just recognizing that and that I appreciate you asking the question, but also recognizing um, and understanding when we have boundaries, what those are and how they came to be. So I always want you to understand the why behind we make the decisions that we make. So, um, and then one of the questions that I had that I saw in the chat box is we did build in all of the receipts into RISE. So in that third demonstration, which you can go back and view about receipts, those will now show up in your RISE account as your facility and as the employee professional development record. So those will not come in the mail. They will just show up on your RISE account. Thank you. I'm seeing a lot of questions about directors and owners being eligible. So I'm gonna clarify a little bit. Only staff that provide childcare are eligible. If you are a non-owner director who sometimes provides childcare, you'll need to make sure that you are working with children 15 hours a week, and then you may be eligible if you are a non-owner director. Owners of facilities are not eligible. Those owners are, could be eligible for receiving those other grants we're administering, but are not eligible for wage enhancement. 
Directors or assistant directors who work with children as part of their regular duties for 15 hours a week or more may be eligible to participate. And then I'm seeing a lot of questions about temporary um, absences from work, things like vacation, things like quarantine. Those are all perfectly fine. And as long as that employee stays an employee of your business and returns to work, they are eligible. So, you know, if, if they're taking a week off vacation, that's just fine. That's the, the regular course of business. And we would anticipate that person would be eligible for that month. We're only looking at people who leave or come onto your staff list as new hires or exit. Oh, let's see, there's lots more questions. I'm going to try and get to the um, the general ones. Um, yes, this is really for one year at this time. Additional funding is coming to our state, but we are still receiving guidance about how we can use the new funding that was recently approved. So at this time, this grant opportunity is for one year. And then the money will be dispersed like previous grant opportunities. So if you are receiving other grants, you'll receive these funds the same way to your business. They will either be direct deposit if you have that set up as because you're an ICCP provider, or there'll be a check in the mail because that's, that's what we have on file for you. We will not be setting up direct deposit for providers who do not already have it. We won't be adding new direct deposit information for grants. And, um, um, business owners who work with children are not eligible because they are the business owner. Um, there was a question about if you do your you paychecks, oh, go, your payroll, so that your payroll would stay the same like you normally do. So if your staff get paid twice a month, then you will receive the grant once a month, but you can disperse that out in your two checks or however that works for your accounting purposes. So it's it's yeah. intended to make your life easy, but to support your staff, not to make it more difficult for you. Yes. First payment, so I'll be very clear about this one as well. Your first payment will come at the end of May mm -hmm. after all of the applications have been reviewed. After your first payment, payments will be processed on the 15th day of the month. So it'll hit your bank account somewhere between the 16th and 17th if you're a direct deposit. It could be up to a week later if you're getting a check in the mail. But that first month will be processed at the very end of May. And then beginning in June, grant disbursements will go out. They'll be processed on the 15th day of the month or the closest business day. And the reason we did that, just so I'll just share a little bit in my intent to be transparent about understanding the why behind things. So for business owners who are currently receiving the child care emergency grant, your payments for those monthly grants are received and or um, are ran on the 10th of each month. So depending on if you're direct deposit or if you're a check, it comes subsequently after the 10th. So we intentionally chose the 15th so that you could have a clear delineation between what funding is coming into your account. And so that you can make sure that for, you know, as your business is running, that you know what those delineated funds are from, from the Department of Health and Welfare, and how then you want to put that into practice for your business. And then I'm just trying to address the what I'm seeing or kind of um, theme. Um, yes, your part-time employees get the exact same amount as your full-time employees. It's for all employees who are serving children 15 hours a week or more. So if you have a part-time employee that's serving children less than 15 hours a week, they're not eligible, but everyone else is getting the same amount. A couple of things as Aubrey is scrolling through the last of things. Um, in our last slide, a couple of things I just want to highlight. So again, the grant will go live on April 1st for you to be able to apply for your um, wage enhancement opportunity in RISE. And, and the grant guide will be on both our Department of Health and Welfare website, as well as you, as you um, saw in the demonstration, that the grant guide is hyperlinked and also held in the RISE resource section now, in the help, excuse me, it's in the help desk um, section of RISE. And then um, I wanted to bring to your attention, Department of Health and Welfare has a new website. So those of you who are on ICCP eligible providers probably have seen the, and trying to navigate our new website. So for the wage enhancement grant, as well as the video, 
it will be, I, I wrote it out instead of just doing the hyperlink. So, cause sometimes it could be a little hard to find, but if you go to the department of health and welfare website, and then there's a section that says for providers and then childcare. And then on our childcare page, it's under resources. So that's where you will find this recording as well as the grant guide and the grant guide will be on rise. And April 1st, you can begin to apply for the grant in RISE. And also, I wanted to share the link to Idaho AEYC for the Preschool Development Grant Needs Assessment. If those of you who've been um, with us in past presentations, you may have seen that or heard me talk about it. But if this is your first time listening in on one of our presentations, that this might be new to you. So I wanted to share that as a resource, if you, that's something familiar, um, interesting for you to look at, if that's of something of interest. Any other last questions that you can see, Aubrey, as I was talking that through? I think we've addressed most of the, the general themes. Um, again, we will strongly encourage you to read the grant guide, and we will not be able to tell you how this will impact your taxes, so you'll want to talk to a tax professional about that. We can't help you with that. Um, we can you know, guide you through the requirements of the grant, but we can't help you with your own um, business costs or, or taxes. And those, I think, are the last of our general themes. And um, let's see, and there's, oh, are 15 hours a week averaged or literal? Um, it is 15 hours a week at minimum. So um, if, you're, if you're averaging, it needs to be very, it's minimum of 15 hours a week. We're really trying to support a strong workforce here. And so that's a limitation that we have that it's 15 hours a week. And the other thing is we're relying on providers to self-report and to keep their information up to date and very accurate. This will prevent overpayment where the department has to request money back from you due to an error. And it also will prevent underpayments because we cannot back pay. So if you fail to update your staff list, we cannot go back and pay those people if you didn't update them. So it's going to be very important, a very important component of participating with this opportunity. But uh, I'm going to let Erica sign off for us, but I want to thank everyone for listening to me ramble through all of those questions so quickly and to know that this presentation will be saved and shared with, with everyone as a link so it can be viewed again. And the grant guide will be posted on our website probably tomorrow um, so that we can you can begin processing your questions and to please use the child care grant email address that we have used for all of our previous grant opportunities if there's a question that is not addressed in the grant guide or that you cannot address with your tax professional exactly thank you very much Aubrey so two final notes I will add one I can never advocate more and celebrate our child care resource and referral staff. They have been with us along this journey as we've developed the wage enhancement grant opportunity. They have been trained. They have been shown rise so that they could help answer questions if you are stuck on where you're like, which accordion do you go to? Um, so I know you all have great personal relationships with your resource and referral staff. So thank you for them for helping us along the way. Um, to Malia, again, for your help in being um, demonstrating the RISE enhancements that we've built out for wage enhancement. And then last but not least is to Aubrey, who put her heart and soul into this initiative um, and really advocated strongly for the voices of our child care providers and our direct staff. So I am looking forward to this opportunity and I'm grateful for you all for the work that you've done and that you continue to do in trying to um, uphold and maintain a highly qualified workforce, which I know is difficult with all the various variables that we have contributing in Idaho. So with that, I hope you have a wonderful evening and thank you again for spending some time with us.